It is illegal to follow an emergency vehicle at a distance closer than a. 500 feet b. 100 feet c. 50 feet d. 1000 feet It is illegal to follow an emergency vehicle at a distance closer than a. 500 feet Emergency vehicles with their lights flashing or sirens on are in the process of responding to an emergency. It is required by law to yield to these vehicles and give them the right of way. Additionally, it is illegal to follow too closely behind an emergency vehicle. In most states, the minimum distance you must keep between your vehicle and an emergency vehicle with its lights flashing or sirens on is 500 feet. The head restraint should be adjusted. A. At the highest level. B. How it is most comfortable. C. To be aligned with the bottom of your neck. D. To be in contact with the back of your head. The head restraint should be adjusted. D. To be in contact with the back of your head. The headrest or head restraint attached to your seat is an important part of your protection and restraint system in the event of a collision. The headrest should be adjusted so that it is aligned and in contact with the back of your head. The purpose of the head restraint is to help protect you from whiplash in a collision. If you find your brakes failing, which of the following should you not do? A. Shift to a lower gear. B. Pump the brake, for non-abs brakes. C. Turn off the ignition. D. Turn on your hazard lights and honk your horn to alert other drivers. If you find your brakes failing, which of the following should you not do? C. Turn off the ignition. Having your brakes fail while you are driving can be a dangerous situation. It is important to know how to handle the situation correctly and safely in order to get your vehicle off the road and stopped. First, you should never turn off your ignition until the car has come to a stop. Turning off your car's ignition while you are still driving at speed can cause the steering wheel to lock up and you to lose control of the vehicle. If you can see an emergency vehicle with flashing lights ahead. A. Speed up to get past the emergency vehicle as quickly as possible. B. Pull over towards the side of the road, but keep driving slowly. C. Pull over towards the side of the road and stop until the vehicle has passed. D. Continue driving as normal. If you can see an emergency vehicle with flashing lights ahead. C. Pull over towards the side of the road and stop until the vehicle has passed. Drivers are required to stop and yield to emergency vehicles when they have their sirens and lights on. On an undivided road with traffic moving in both directions, drivers are required to pull over and stop when an emergency vehicle with lights, sirens on is approaching from the opposite direction. Which of the following are used as left edge lines on divided highways? A. Broken white line. B. Broken yellow line. C. Solid white line. D. Solid yellow line. Which of the following are used as left edge lines on divided highways? D. Solid yellow line. The color and type of lane markings indicates what part of the road it is dividing and what kind of passing or turning is permitted. On a divided highway, the leftmost edge of the road is marked by a solid yellow line. Next to this line will typically be a concrete divider that separates traffic moving in opposite directions. You are not allowed to cross over this line to ride on the left shoulder to pass other vehicles. In a vehicle equipped with dual airbags the safest place for infants is A. Any seat. B. The front seat. C. The back seat. D. On the driver's lap. In a vehicle equipped with dual airbags the safest place for infants is, C. The back seat. While airbags are designed to help keep an adult safe in the event of a crash, they can present a serious safety risk for small children. For this reason, all small children, infants, and babies should be seated in the back seat in an appropriate car seat or booster seat. It is important to confirm that any car seats or booster seats are the right size based on the child's weight and height. It is also important to confirm that the seat is latched on properly and securely to the car. Construction Zone Signs
A. Are always white and black. B. Are always orange and black. C. Are always yellow and black. D. Do not need to be obeyed. Construction zone signs, B, are always orange and black. Construction signs are always orange and black and warn drivers of temporary changes and hazards in the road due to construction and maintenance projects. Failing to obey work zone signs can result in increased fines and traffic tickets. A good defensive driver should A, anticipate the actions of other drivers. B, look straight ahead at all times. C, always drive slower than other vehicles on the road. D, use their brakes at the last minute. A good defensive driver should A, anticipate the actions of other drivers. A major aspect of defensive driving is being able to anticipate the actions of other drivers. That means, defensive drivers will constantly scan the road ahead and around them to predict what the other vehicles may do. This allows them to be better prepared to react and adjust in the event of a potential hazard or risky situation. Some of this comes with driving experience, but it is important to begin practicing the skill from the beginning. The color of a motorist service sign is A. Green B. Blue C. Yellow D. Red The color of a motorist service sign is B. Blue Motorist service signs are blue with white lettering and designs. These signs are used to indicate nearby services, such as gas stations, electric vehicle charging stations, call boxes, restaurants, lodging, rest stops, hospitals. You are driving on a highway and your gas pedal gets jammed. What should you do? A. Shift into neutral. B. Apply the brakes to slow down. C. Pull off the road, stop, and turn off the engine. D. All of these. You are driving on a highway and your gas pedal gets jammed. What should you do? D. All of these. Having your car's gas pedal get stuck while driving can be a dangerous situation. It's important to know how to handle it properly. If you notice that your gas pedal has become stuck or if your vehicle won't stop accelerating, shift your vehicle into neutral to disengage the transmission. Your engine will still be running, but it will not deliver power to make you go faster. Safely slow down by applying the brakes. Great job! Here are some of your next steps to getting your learner's permit or driver's license. Read and study the official driver handbook from your state DMV. Take more free practice tests at puedomanejar.com. Gather all your necessary forms and documents before you visit the DMV office. Before you know it, you'll be driving in your very own car all by yourself. puedomanejar.com. Free DMV practice tests and much more to help you pass your real exams. Visit us today.